G'day, welcome to Brewpeg. We are sorting out our rudder, so we put it on last week. Um, this week we're going to do a little bit more plasma work on the wings that we welded in. The issue that we have is when we put these wings on, we didn't really know how big to make them, so we just made them big, too big, and then we thought we'd plasma them off. You can see that there, it's sitting on the actual nozzle itself. If I come right down, you can sort of see the, the two of them are connected. So we just need to go through and, and get the plasma out and nip off that corner just so that we can, on the wing itself, so that we can make sure that it'll clear the um, the, the propeller nozzle as it goes up and down um, and then we also need to throw the uh, rudder 35 degrees left to right to make sure that it doesn't bind up when we start moving it sideways that it's not going to bind up on this part of the nozzle over here so uh, yeah we're stuck in and see if we can get that to work. Make or break plasma cutting you want to make sure the consumables on your plasma are in decent condition or else the little plasma jet will come out at a funny angle and make a mess of your work. You want to make sure that you've got a really good earth so in this case I've got an earth clamped as hard as I can to the stainless up here and then I've also taken the paint off this lip just here I've actually scraped all the paint so it's bare steel it helps me get the plasma started initially and then you can burn through the paint once you're through that and then finally the last bit is the safety piece safety shorts available in one size slightly too small with an additional ventilation flap Have you seen the size of my rudder? <laughs> So we've trimmed up you can sort of see they're basically sitting flush and level which isn't ideal it does need to go down a bit further um, I probably would have welded these wings on maybe another inch lower if, you know if I was doing it again but we can easily clear that up with a bit of uh, plasma we'll just trim a bit more of that wing away what we need to do it's the same on both sides you can sort of see similar sort of alignment with that one there and there's there's clearance all the way around however we need that shaft to come a bit further down so that we can get our jump collars these are jump collars, so this is what stops the rudder on brew peg travelling up. So they bolt around the shaft like that. So you can sort of see it's a pretty simple arrangement. And then the shaft obviously goes through that gap there. There's a this is machined exactly to the diameter of the shaft, and then this area here has got a pretty big 45 radius on it, so that you can um, clear the weld from the the shaft coming down to the flange that sits down in here. These collars basically fit up one on either side one on this side one on this side here and they go around the shaft as you can imagine there however as you can see they don't fit they that rudder needs to come down more and I'll show you what's causing that issue so on the bottom of the rudder we've got our bottom pintle bearing so that yellow bush that you can see there the rudder needs to come down 10 mil so we're going to clear that yellow bush out the way it doesn't need to be there um, it's just an addition, it was never there on the original, it was something that was put there on these new ones but we don't need it so we're just going to flap it away and that'll allow the rudder to drop down another 10 mil and get us um, enough clearance to be able to put those jump collars on. We were thinking we're going to have to rip the rudder off again with a forklift but um, it turns out we figured out a way of doing it without having to go to that extent. What the plan is, we're going to throw, we've got two of four bolts up on the top flange here, we're going to throw the other two in there so that it's nice and stable um, and then we're just literally going to jack it up from the bottom. I need to take the rudder off this bottom pin to be able to grind the yellow bush. See by jacking it up we've probably got, I don't know, three inches or so roughly to be able to lift up and if we come all the way down to this pin that's just enough I'm hoping to get access to that yellow aspect of that pin uh, of that bush sorry and then yeah hopefully we'll be able to buzz that off and then lay the rudder back down clean it all up and then buzz um, lay the rudder back down and yeah should be able to get those collars back on what did you want to do I was thinking of doing the little dinghy are we running out of projects <laughs> 
it would just be very satisfying. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I don't. Would it take very long? I don't know. Weekend, maybe two tops. Uh, it's a bit long if it's two. Probably. Oh, I reckon. Yeah. I don't know. The first one's always going to take me longer than the second one. You know, like. But I reckon we can knock it over because it's a pretty simple build. I'm thinking of a break from. Um, jobs that are kind of hard and full of grease or full of something difficult <laughs> <laughs> and we've got two dinghies so this is the big one that everyone knows about this one and that's the one we're going to sand back to aluminium it's going to get quite a hard life um, and we're going to put the rolls the aluminium rolls on it what are they called pontoons yeah um, and this is one that we found not long ago and this is we're considering this my one we're not going to sand this back, we're just going to strip it down, we're just going to sand the rims and we're going to put pontoons on this one as well. So we have two, a baby and a big one. <laughs> this little one is going to be run by an electric motor <clears throat> and it's going to be just kind of getting back and forth to, you know, a, a wharf or something like that. So, um, sort of the day-to-day -day stuff and the big one will live up on top of the, um, the boat and that'll be used for more expedition stuff, sort of longer distance and that's going to have the jet engine in it so that's going to be able to go really fast um, and that'll handle 10 people we, I'm not sure how much this one's rated for um, maybe six it'll say it on that back little yeah, plate yeah I haven't even seen that five five people nine horse what's the maximum kg oh 450 kg there we go mm. so this one is so little like it's a it's an easier job because it's less to weld and it's a great trial um, and it means that right away we've got a dinghy when we hit the water, which would be brilliant. Um, and it proves that it can work. And then we get on with the big one. So this yellow bush material, it doesn't like um, friction cutting. Like if you put a grinding wheel onto it, it just turns into a gel. It's disgusting. Um, so I'm going to try a tile cutter. So it's got opposing blades. It's basically a grinder that has two opposing blades. One goes one goes counterclockwise, one goes clockwise, and I'm hoping it's going to cut into the yellow thing without basically turning it into a gooey mess. Um, I won't go to the final cut with this, I'll flap of the final cut, um, but I'm just going to do this as a test just to see can I actually cut it with this. Um, I don't have a handsaw, if I did it would probably take forever anyway, but I'd maybe even try and do it with like a tenon saw or something like that, but give this a shot and see if it even works. Right then Ian showed up and had a handsaw that Dan could use. So before I get carried away with power tools, I'm going to see if I can even cut it with... Oh, you did. want to see in the back here is for it to be sitting down but it's not sitting down so what on earth is going on aren't you cutting into the um, shaft uh, no this won't physically be able to cut into it because oh. the shaft's much harder I'm wondering about using Bertha to try and rotate it. Oh yeah. Bring it out. Backwards. You can hear it. Yeah. When it touches the shaft. Yeah. I think I'll have to, I don't think I'll be able to break it, so I think I'll just walk on that side. Done. Right. You okay with 
at the top? Yep. Can you tell me where to get close? You can get in there. Maybe that bolt might hit the top of the... Oh yeah, ready. Is she? Oh no, she would done. That's enough. That's it? Yep. Let's load it down. So these jump collars, you can sort of see how they work here. Basically, they've got a recess so that they allow clearance, recess machined into them to allow clearance for this weld here. And then because this rudder can go up and down, and that's what allows it to come on and off the pin at the bottom, these jump collars stop it from being able to travel up. So if we, if you come back over here, if we're driving along, and on the bottom of this rudder, if we smack into something and the bottom physically tries to go up in that direction, and it, it can come off that pin if there's nothing to stop it, that's the whole purpose of these jump collars, is it basically stops the rudder from being able to travel up far enough to cause any dramas. And that's why they're built so solidly, is because they have to take an impact, um, you know, something big enough to lift the rudder off its hinges. Okay, collar should fit now. Oh. Actually, because we like aerodynamics, we're going to put them that way. Oh yeah! I didn't realise it, but I started putting in these four bolts and this flange, the stainless flange, you can see there's a number four written on that one there. I didn't realise it, I thought it was just a uniform um, like four bolt hole flange type thing and then the duplicate on the bottom of the rudder there, but it's not, it's been custom drilled. So that number four has to line up with the number four on the rudder and I have no idea if we've welded it into that position or not. So as a result, I think the answer is no, this bolt here doesn't quite line up, so it's very, very, very tight. So I'm using special service tool number three, a piece of stainless pipe on a big strong bar, and we're getting this in. I'm aware some people will say things like, you shouldn't be winding that in like that. You know, it should be drilled out and clean hole and, and all that sort of stuff. You're welcome to come and drill this out. Just let me know when your flight arrives. The shank of the bolt's obviously got far enough through that it's just spinning now. The thread isn't actually winding it in any further. Right, I have to crank it from the bottom. Oh. Click, click. That's the, that's the torque setting. Sometimes known as FT. No, it's all good. I don't have a 65 mil socket, but I've got to make one, so I couldn't do the nut on the top of it up. You can't purchase a 65 mil oh. socket. Yeah, you need a mortgage for it, though. You do it, really? Oh, yeah. Curious rudder. With the wings. Well, the wings and this big bluff on the back. Yeah, the, I added all the wings. This is all standard, but um, the. I come from a yacht racing background, yeah. and um, trawlers do all sorts of stuff to try and make the, when you turn the blade, yeah. you only got half your nozzle 
um, effectively working. So you've got half of it coming off to the side and, half, and the other half going straight through. Yeah. So you don't have a lot of steering load out. Like at two or three knots or coming into wharfs and shit like that, they've got bugger all steering normally. So they put this on the back and it tries to, as the water comes out, it tries to direct it further off to the side. Yeah. Some of them will have like angle iron welded like that. So yeah. got, you know, and it's pretty much just designed to create drag at the back end of the rudder. But that's not actually the problem. The problem is what's called tip vortex. So if you spin this over 35 degrees, yeah. you've got this water down low here yeah. trying to go out and, and it'll hit in this area here. Yeah. And instead of getting directed and going that way, it'll go up and over the other side and it just bypasses the rudder. They just get turbulent. So it sucks. So top and bottom basically yep. suck. So you only end up with this much rudder actually doing anything. Okay. So if you put a horizontal wing top and bottom, it locks the water from being able to go yep. up and over. Yeah, that's why they have wing keels on yachts. Ah. Yeah, and it stops tip vortex. And same deal with um, like planes, you get yeah. a little wing Wing tips, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. What's your background apart from fishing? Uh, I left school and got trained as a mechanic. Yep for nine months. Um, and then I left that and did um, engine reconditioning. And then from there I left that and did uh, precision machining. Yep. So we used to build gearboxes for classic race bikes. Yep. And um, and engines and stuff, like we'd make the whole thing, not, not rebuild them, but we'd actually build the entire engine. Um, yeah, we'd build them out of magnesium and titanium valves and all sorts of shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then I actually started my own company. I started running a bus company of all things. Yeah. Um, and I started doing school runs, you know, for, for local schools and stuff. And in then, New Zealand? Yeah, New Zealand. Mm. And then um, and then I realised that I could make more money in, instead of like the same amount of money I'd make in a week and a half on a school run, I could make in four hours if I do a pub crawl. Yeah. So I, I started another division of the business. I actually, I actually rebuilt each bus that I got and I yeah. rebuilt them so that we could hose them out. Yeah. Um, so I'm <laughs> pretty cool but um, I ended up um, I ended up running that, me and Jess ran that for two years and then we sold it yeah. and that uh, and the profits from that I used to do in stock market investing. I taught myself how to do stock market investing. Oh god. So, Is there anything you won't try? <laughs> yeah, I just problem solved really good. Yeah. Yeah, I gave that a go and that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah. It was a pretty good time in the market and I was doing a 35% return on investment for 18 months in a row and then I sold the business and sold the, all the shares and that's what got us over to Aussie um, and then I started working over here so it's the first time we've really had a proper job like yeah. <laughs> we've, we've got to Aussie but... all right service tool Get it. You want me to have a go on it? Because I'm, I'm taller, I could probably get a little, just a little bit more go on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do you. You sure? Yeah, that's not going to come off. Get back on a go. Good old Archimedes. <laughs> Right, heave. Yeah. Alright? That'll do you. Yeah. Okay. You want to do the other two? Yeah. Probably enough on that one. So for those that don't know what Project Brewpeg actually is, Jess and I bought Brewpeg uh, about five years ago now and we converted her from a sunken fishing trawler into an expedition and research boat. We want to take people with us, Brewpeg was always a boat to share. 
and part of the way that we do that is through Patreon. So if you're physically not able to get onto Brewpeg, if you're at the other side of the world or work commitments don't allow, you can come with us through Patreon. If you're interested in actually being physically on board Brewpeg, coming on some of our missions and doing some of the research and things that we're going to be doing with this boat, then that's also another aspect of, what, of our um, supporters. They, they can get on board this boat. So if that's something that interests you, let us know. We've got a website that you can contact us through or you can contact us through Facebook. Or, so we're going to post when we're going on a leg or we've got a project coming up. If you're interested, get in touch and um, we'll see if we fit. And if you do, you come on board. Patreon's kind of like our crew. Um, it's kind of like what keeps us going. It's, it's, I never ever thought it would be that way. It's uh, access to getting on board. So it's like a, a preliminary way that you can get to know us and we get to know you. I'm so grateful because without them, this would not be possible. So please consider supporting us through Patreon and becoming part of our crew. We'd love to have you on board. Right now, because I'm not gonna hydraulic these by putting too much copper coat on, I've put too much copper coat on just because more is awesome in this situation. It can always come off, it's not a big deal. Cool. What I wanna do is make sure that the face ends up with a lot of um, lubricant on there, because again, stainless on stainless, don't want them galling up. Right, so I'll put them on there. Crank it up. Not gonna get it tighter than that. Done. One rudder bolted up. All right, I need to get some new bolts for this. I need to get some new bolts for these jump collars in town because I had to cut them off with a grinder. They were galled up when I tried to undo it all. So we'll replace those this week. So I need to go and pull this up tight up top, so I'll show you what we need to build. My biggest socket is about, I don't know, 50 mil, something like that, two inches, maybe a bit more. Not big enough for this, so we need to crank this down. We need to crank this yoke down onto the shaft, so essentially the shaft's going to be pulled up through. So what I need to do is build a service tool that's going to allow me to do that nut up. So. What I'm thinking, I'll just measure this with my smallest G clamp. There we go, so she's uh, bang on 65, plus or minus a bit of paint. Alright, 65mm. Let's go and look with what we've got out the back, see what we can make a tool out of. Had a few boats in and out this weekend, there's a few stands empty. What I'm thinking is a bit of like 10mm plate or something like that. Something reasonably strong. 6mm will be enough, but 10mm will be better. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's a bit of 16 down the back. I don't know what that is. Oh, looks like a bit of half inch. That'll do. Let's go with that. <laughs> we need the compressor on too. Away she goes! Fuel processor, old generator, some diesel, 10 ton winch, lots of veggie oil, half a dinghy, and the workshop. Alright, so pretty simple, just need to cut out a big hex and then weld it to a bit of pipe with a big bar on it, and that's going to be my socket. Shape. So that's what we're working with, basically 65mm six sided hex and the circle, whatever diameter it is, maybe, I don't know, three and a half, four inch, something like that, bit of pipe, but we'll weld that pipe on top of that, that'll slide down over top of everything and hex up onto that nut, and then I'll probably weld a piece of pipe or something on top of that that we can either slide another piece of pipe into or just weld it on and leave it, probably, probably do the slider pipe onto jobby. Yeah, but anyway, let's cut this out with the plasma and see how we get on.
yeah so this is what we've got so that's my hex that's the nut that it needs to fit onto see if it even works oh, it's bloody close bit of a file up and we'll get those edges out see if it works It's on there, enough. and had a measure up this is going to work I'm figuring on just welding it in like that see how strong it is and then um yeah stick a pipe in the end and we'll go and turn it oh here's something we didn't really think about you make your own socket and That's right, yeah, you know, it's fine. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the bottom just locates it, like, because it was always 10 mil clear or so at the bottom originally, yeah. so. Was it really rusty, like, yeah. all through here? Oh, uh, not, uh, not really, yeah. Okay, so it hasn't leaked then? No, no, it hasn't leaked, no. Yeah, no, no, you're all good. It wasn't tidy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't have been tidy, but. No. Although it got a good wash. This, this hatch, hatch would have been, um, yeah, it would have got a good wash, right? <laughs> it's fresh. I made a 65 mil socket. Perfect, mate. No, oh, that's good. It looks really good, eh? Do you have to get a Just kind of make sure we're going down onto that. That needs to not be spinning. I think we're running out of um, thread, which is my worst fear. Which means that the shaft is too long. Click, click. No reason I couldn't shave 5mm off the bottom of the rudder. So it's not affect anything. I cocked up, made the rudder shaft too long. So I have to chop the bottom of the rudder off to compensate. So I'll show you what that actually means. So we've realized we've run out of room up the top to adjust it. And we need this surface of the flange, this stainless flange here, needs to come down about five mil, down to about there. And obviously with no adjustment at the top, we have to create it somewhere else. So we are going to create it on the bottom of the rudder. So down here, you can see there's a very slight gap between the surface of that stainless there and the bottom of the rudder on the, the white part of the rudder there. If I knock off 5 mil from that, so literally cut it about there somewhere, all the way around, we're going to get ourselves the 5 mil that we need of adjustment. Before I get into cutting the bottom of the rudder, I just wanted to make sure that the rudder is sitting exactly where it needs to. So we lop these wings off so that we can get the full 35 degrees bend and there's nothing stopping the rudder from sitting at its bottom position. Let's look at the keel. Let's line the rudder up with the keel. I'm not convinced this wing's welded on square. So if we measure back from the pivot, we'll be able to do some maths and figure out uh, where it ends up. How far sideways in millimeters equals 35 degrees. We go. From the centre of that, from the back of that, I'll make that 6, we'll call it 630, close enough. So let's make a mark where we 
think our back centre is. So, um, just going to do some maths. Let's get a Google calculator and we'll figure it out. Uh, and side C is 6, 30. So we know this, this one's there. Yeah. Okay, so we know we can work out the angles, right? So it's 180 degrees is the total angle. So these two will be equal. So what's 180 minus 35. All right, so we need to go sideways 300 and call it 379 millimeters, 60 mil. So 630 minus 60 mil is going to be 570. So I need to come out in this. So I'm trying to trying to allow for this. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. So what I'm thinking is if we work our way around and draw an arc for so 570, yeah. yeah, and then we can do our 379, and then oh, we'll yeah. if we get that lining up there, we've got 35 oh, degrees. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, Alright. Okay. So if we can get, if we can get the rubber in there, that's 35 degrees. So we've got to go more, so that's cool, we'll just swap a bit more out. Okay, let's just, let's just cut like another inch. Because yeah. we need a little bit of clearance as well, so... Pretty close. Pretty bang on, eh? So that's with no clearance here, but I'll cut some clearance out. What what limits it to 35 degrees? Um, travel of the, the rams. Yeah, there's a ram on either side yeah. that back up and stop it. So, has it got stops up there? No. Or is it the ram itself that gets to the end? The rams itself, but I'm probably going to add chains and. So that it, yeah, the chat, yeah. I was going to say, otherwise you end up punching the yeah, the ram out. So Craig was saying that we need 35 degrees either side from center line and we've just we did some some Google Maths and we figured out that that mark there is 35 degrees from center line that being our center line there this being 35 degrees and if we stick this up we'll go that way so you can see it if we stick this up the center line of the rudder out there somewhere about as square as we're probably going to get we're, we're at 35 and I've got about half an inch of clearance all the way around the steel work on the nozzle. So if I need to, I can go, I can go further again if we really have to, but we don't need to, I've just basically cut clearance. So I'll go through now, clean it up with a grinder, and then we know that that's our final shape for the front of the wing. In race yachts, one of the first things they teach you is how to go fast, is turn the boat without using the rudder. So you lean the boat, depending on where you want, to get the hull to do the turning so that the rudder basically trails and doesn't, as soon as you start turning mm. it, it's a break. Mm, mm. So it's the more rudder you're using, yeah. the slower you right. go. Yeah. I've punched my thumb so many times today. Oh, have you? <laughs> well, luckily I only did it into sharp hot steel. Yeah. How bad is it? That's fine, it didn't hurt that much. No uh, heroes in boat building. <laughs> Okay. Okay, shape. Right, well that gives me my basic shape anyway though. Alright, so let's put that on the other side.
we'll go, we'll go back. That's when we come back to that. Oh, well, seeing you've yet to be the turn. Yeah. Oh, we're well over it. So that's looking directly down the... You can see the nozzle is slightly different on this side here. It's not sticking up very high. If you look basically flat down the wing there, it's not sticking up very high. Whereas this one here sticks up higher. So when we push the rudder over to this side, it just sort of sits beside the nozzle. But when we push it over to this side, it tries to go under the nozzle. So obviously need to recess this side a little bit more just so that we get some clearance. The easiest way to solve that is to basically just trim this. So we'll do a mark around like so. Clean up to do. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that's yeah. gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're well past 35 there. So, where's 35? About there somewhere? Pretty close? Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. Alright, so, alright, cool. So, at 35, we've got a good half inch clearance around the nozzle. You can see yeah. up in this area here. <laughs> yeah, up in there, it's very, yeah. very. Yeah, and this area here is very, very tight. Um, so trim a bit of that off now, I think. You might as well, yeah. Yeah. Got the moment, hey. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Yep. Yeah. That's us. Lovely. But it's not much. It's five mil. Yeah. So we'll just take five mil off this area here. Oh, we should be good to go. That's good. So that's that's where the that there is where the rudder sits, maximum extension. realize that we made it, well, when we say we, I made a slight error in the length of the shaft. Oh. It's a couple of mil too long. So I need to take a couple of mil off the bottom of the rudder to compensate. Because it's not sitting at full tight. Yeah, it's, sit, it's sitting on that bush as yeah. opposed to on the thrust bearing at the top. So I need to knock five mil off that so that it hangs on the thrust bearing at the top. Yeah. I didn't realize that until it was all bolted together. So the stainless pin comes down straight and then it radiuses on the corner and then goes out onto the flat part, the horizontal part. And the bush itself, because we had to chop that, I don't know, 10 mil or whatever it was off that bush, there's no longer a chamfer, because I made a chamfer on the inside of that bush. Um, it's, and sitting, it's sitting on the bearing now? Yeah, it's sitting on the yellow That's bearing. That's why it doesn't look like it's on yeah, there to me, right? Okay. So what it's actually sitting on is, is the bottom corner of the bearing mm. on the chamfer of the stainless. Mm. So. Hmm. So you just have to lift it. Yeah. So what I need to do? Have to radius it off so that the angle is the same. Yeah. I need to shave. Point. I need to shave five mil off the steel. Yeah. And then I need to get my radius tool in there and, and make a radius in the bearing, so that so overall we move that bottom up, that like completely up by about five mil. Can you yeah. do it just by win you know put winching it up like rather than lifting it off with a forklift? Can you get into the to do the inside chamber? I can get in there to cut the five mil off, definitely. I'm not, I'm not confident of getting the radius tool in there, the chamfer tool in there. I just don't think I'll be able to get that in. Do you have to use a forklift again? No, I'm going to cut five mil off and then put it back on and see if it actually sits on that radius. Because you could just do what Craig did, you know, just the sanding. Yeah. Because you could easily, like I can get my fingers. Yeah, yeah, sand it. But the trouble, I don't really want to put my fingers in there because if it drops, then you lose fingers. So. Put something on the side so it yeah. jump, falls down on something. But, but the flip side is it probably doesn't matter. Mm. Like if we take five mil off, mm. and even if it, if it is sitting on that bottom edge, it really doesn't matter because okay. the plastic will wear out. All the right. stainless is going to chew the plastic. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's for tomorrow. Yeah. So tomorrow's job is chop the bottom of the rudder off. Yeah. Yep. 
but for now we're... That's we're, why you don't have to take it off. Yeah, yeah. I know, I was, I'm trying to avoid that. We had it on and off about five times when we put it on. <laughs> yeah. Do the last bit now. Maybe do the cutting when you're fresh. Yeah, so okay. So there's no yeah. accident, that might be good, eh? Fair enough. And here's you telling me not to use a spanner. Because <laughs> I'm thinking of using the spanner this long. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> one they use to make the watch repairs. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is it a little spanner? Sorry my, my little spanner isn't big enough. <laughs> Let me get that away. That's the wrong hammer for that job. <laughs> Since when are you concerned about the right tool? <laughs> Uh, what am I doing? About a minute to go. <laughs> Alright, how do we get these off with one bolt gone? Oh, brilliant. Hey! Lovely. Nice. Alright, it's morning time. We are so close to getting this rudder on. Um, I just got to cut 5mm off the bottom and then we should be right to see if we can fit it. Alright, let's get into it. Alright. So because the rudder's still connected to the shaft and everything, I've jacked it all up and between the thrust bearing and or the thrust plate, sorry, and the bottom of the yoke, uh, it was 110mm, so I've got 110mm of alloy and steel in there packed up so that it can't fall down. So I just got rid of the jack. The the entire weight was hanging from that setup up top, so that setup up top's able to hold everything. I've got the jack under it anyway, um, just so that it's, yeah, should be sweet. So if that one up top fails, this will catch it, or vice versa. Um, but basically we've got two methods of holding it up. Because I like my fingers. Just cut it off. Wow. Oh. Have a look. Yeah. Oh wow, look at that. Takes it off pretty easy, eh? Yeah, you just have to clean it out really well, won't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'll give it a good um, clean up now and then yeah. lower it down and see where it sits. You wouldn't want any of that gut coat stain in the bearing, would you? Yeah, I'll, I'll pro I'm thinking of washing it all out with oil and stuff just to yeah. give it a real good clean. Yeah, great. God, that looks amazing. What a good, good cup. Is that a 5 inch? That's 5 inch, yeah. Oh, that's easy as, eh? Yeah. I, I wanted to use the 5 because I've got a bit more control over it. Yeah. So it was a bit easier. It's a perfect cup, sweetheart. Thanks. Lovely. The, the sparks were flying around the nozzle and landing back on me. Oh, were they? Yeah. You're covered, are you? Yeah, I kicked in them in my head. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm going to just go. I'll be back in a, an hour, I think. All right, cool. It's be long. Oh, the footage is just beautiful. Thanks. I just looked through some of the footage. The imagery is great. Oh, thanks. I think it's actually be a lot another long one. Okay, cool. But I think it's okay. It's, it's got a lot of diversity in it, you know? All right, cool. Awesome. I realised the way I cut the rudder, the, the wings, at the top there, that I can only lift it up and down if it's pointing forward and back. <laughs> if it's off to the side, I can't cut it and take it out. <laughs> Right, and that should squeeze down. Perfect. Right. Dink on the plate of it. Probably all we're going to get. Let's see if the jump collar's fit. Before we do that, 
go back up and we'll see if we can figure out if that thrust plate's sitting right. Washing day. I don't think that's sitting right. If I can turn it, it's wrong. Oh, I can't turn it, that's new. Oh no, I can lift it. Ah, there we go, it's turning. All right, it's sitting up on something else. Okay, we're gonna have to figure that out. I feel like this is the 20 minute job that's taken three weeks. I've got two more things I need to check on the rudder before I can sign this job off as finished. So I'll show you what I've got to do on it. So it's sitting up too high. So if you look there, you can sort of see there's a bit of a gap between the bottom of the rudder now and that um, stainless shaft. I have a suspicion that that pin is slightly too long and it's bottoming out on the rudder. Um, very easy to tell, we just need to jack the rudder up and then do some measurements and see if it's binding up. If that's the case, it's easy, we just cut the pin down 5mm, something like that. Um, if that's not the case, then it's probably the, the um, keyway on the top end of the shaft that needs a little bit of attention. Right, so theoretically we should have had two millimetres of clearance, which isn't enough. I think that's where our problem is starting to go. Yeah, right. That's too long. I have to cut maybe five mil off that, which would give me probably a couple of mil clearance once it's fully seated. Um, so I think we'll knock a bit of that off, see how we go. I reckon I've solved it. This is the old pin. Now if I measure, if I measure it like that, it's pretty much bang on 100 or just a fraction over 100 millimeters. The new pin, if I measure it, it's 103 and a half. So 103.5, so um, we've got three and a half mil too high on that one compared to the old one. And this one has got a polished edge on the top here, which means I reckon this one was too long as well. So I'm gonna knock five mil off that one, which is pretty conservative when you think three and a half, it's only taking one and a half mil down from this height here. So I reckon we're pretty conservative overall. We can always take a bit more off. So yeah. We'll cut into that. It's a bit of a stonking great bar to cut, but we'll cut that. Um, and then we should be able to get that back down. I think it's binding up on the inside of the rudder, and I think that's the problem. I'm going to try and lower this down and then if it fits I'll jack it back up and put some grease in it. Right, let's get you all the way down. Let's see how well that fits up top. I've got this right, and I'm not saying I have, but if I've got this right, it should be sitting on that thrust plate. I shouldn't be able to get any movement out of the thrust plate at all. It should be completely bound up. So, let's see how we did. All right, I'm seeing grease squeezy, which is a good thing. So, yeah, I got no movement on that shaft plate, uh, on that thrust bearing there. Previously, I could spin the plate because this yoke was sitting a bit too tall, but it's sitting down on it now, so I won't be able to move anything now because it's gonna be so stiff because the full weight of the rudder is hanging on this plate now. But 
you can see down here, see how there's grease squeezing out around the bottom of this yoke? And above here and below here, there's like a the layer. That's exactly what we're after. So when we pump grease into this, that'll start to ooze out. Um, so there'll always be a, a ring of grease around that area. Um, and that's because of those channels that we made. So we're ready now to start um, putting some grease into that tube. It'll probably take quite a while to pump that tube up because there is a lot of air to come out. Um, but most of that will go out through the bottom because the um, yeah, the bottom bearing didn't have a huge amount of grease on it, so we should be able to pump a lot of that out. And then as we get water pressure once we've launched, as we get water pressure pushing from the bottom up, it'll start easing up the top. If we have any dramas with that system, then we can easily just chuck a, um, a, a grease nipple in the top. I'll probably just knock the yoke off and, and do something along that line, but for now, piece of cake, we'll, um, we'll roll with what we've got. Started filling with the grease. You see there's nothing coming out this end here yet. That's still basically as is. It's a very tight fit there and there's no grease channels to basically allow grease to easily escape the tube and go out. We want that like that on purpose. Right, let me show you the top. Down here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap between that thrust bearing wear plate and the grease at the top and I've lifted it up with the jack down below, I'll show you why. There we go, so that's grease that's squeezing out of the channel that we just made. So the reason why I've got the whole thing lifted up is because I want to see grease coming out of that channel, which I know it does. So I'll drop it back down now and then I can go and um, fill the tube up and make sure it all comes out the bottom. So now we're just um, bumping grease for hours into these lines. First time takes forever because I'm pumping it into a completely empty tube. Oh, that's the end of my third, third tube gone. I don't know how much they are, half a, half a litre each, half kg, something like that, whatever the value is. Um, all right, I need more grease. So, rudder's right on. We know why it wasn't sitting right. The pin at the bottom wasn't machined exactly the same as the old one, um, therefore it was holding the rudder up. So, what we've achieved out of all of this, we've got the rudder is gonna give us more steering because we've got the wings top and bottom. It's been blasted, we know there's no rubbish on it now, it's all been painted with epoxy etch. We'll get a tie coat on that and then we'll get anti -fail. Uh I've yet to weld on the bolts for the um, uh, zinc anodes, so I'll do that shortly. Um, the bearings are all in great condition now, they're all brand new and back to um, minimum clearance, which is what we want. Uh, the shaft is perfect, it's absolutely beautiful shaft, it's, I'm so stoked with it. Um, thank you John, it was amazing, amazing machining. Um, and then finally we've got a tube that's completely full of grease. We know every part of the steering system and we know that we're not going to have any drama. Um, and if it is, it's going to be very, very simple to fix because everything in there is brand new. Would always shine when we sat there, you and I.